I have a Python function over here that is taking a massive LLM shortcut. It's an interesting function because it doesn't have an implementation whatsoever. It just says pass over here. So I'm not defining anything inside of the function. However, what the function does have is a doc string over here. And you'll notice that there's also an input variable over here. You'll also notice that this doc string kind of feels like a Jinja template and that I'm inserting that variable inside of the template over here. And if you pay attention, you'll also notice that there's a decorator on top. Now, the cool thing about that one decorator is that it can look at the doc string over here and it understands that the input of the function should be inserted. And then it can regard that as a prompt to send to some LLM backend. This one decorator, at least to me, is a very convenient way in my Python scripts, just hack a little bit of LLM stuff in there without having to learn a whole library. I can really just focus on just using Python functions. And uh, also just to prove and demonstrate that this works, I can just call this function. It's gonna take a small while. And when the response comes back, you can see that, hey, yeah, I do get a description over here for uh, Pikachu that is one of the most widely recognized Pokemon and franchise. Okay, this function actually just kind of works. The only thing I really have to do is come up with a doc string that describes what I want. And this to me feels like a very likable pattern. This is super nice if you're doing rapid prototyping. Now at this point, you're probably kind of curious about this decorator. And the whole point of this video is to explain to you how I made this. If you want to play around with it, you can actually find it in a library that I made. There's a library called Smart Funk. And that has a backend that you can call. And that backend is something that you can use to define whatever backend you want your LLM functions to be. So in this case, I have an LLMFI decorator, but that's defined by using the GPD-4 backend. You can pick other backends. You can also set the system prompt in here, change the temperature, all that good stuff. But again, the main goal of this library is to keep stuff simple. So what I want to do is explain how this was made, but also show you some of the bells and whistles that I've added to this. After which I'm also going to compare the approach that this library takes with some alternatives that you might also want to consider. The main thing that I hope to drive home here is that this is just a very nice way of working, especially if you're just getting started or uh, rapid prototyping or something like that. The main hero of this story, by the way, is the Python inspect module. What I'm able to do is I'm able to grab this function that I've defined over here, and I can ask the inspect module to get the doc string. And you can see, hey, that's uh, something that's relatively easy to fetch. From here, it's hopefully also clear that I can take, you know, a template string like this, give that to Jinja, and that's a recipe for me to also take whatever input parameters that I've got and render that in line. That's also something I can totally do. But if you want to, we can also go a step further. Because the typing module also gives us this get type hints function that we can go ahead and use. So if I were to maybe add a type here, for example, the Pokemon input, that's a string, then we can get the type hints and confirm that the input over here is indeed a string. And note that we can do that not just for the input elements over here, we can also do that for the output elements. So I could, as a user maybe, come up with some sort of output type that I would like to have for my Pokemon and my LMFI decorator would be able to access that. I have access to not just this doc string over here, I've also got access to this type information. And that is something that I can use to make this even more powerful. Because this is where I can start using Pydantic. I can come up with some sort of a Pokemon class and, you know, I can maybe come up with some properties of the Pokemon. So I could say, hey, there's a name of a Pokemon. Maybe there's some sort of a, a description of the Pokemon. Maybe there are some uh, Pokemon types. So there would be a list of string. If I'm typing. And okay, let's import that list as well. And I could say, well, that's a description class of a Pokemon, so that might work. And in this particular case, the interesting thing is that Pydantic class is a schema of sorts. That object is something that I can actually fetch by using that get type hints function from typing. Oh, and that means that I might be able to tweak my prompt such that the LLM backend is aware of the return type that I'm interested in getting. Now, this feature is great. It's just that not every single backend supports this. A couple of LLM backends have been specifically trained to guarantee that they're able to return a schema, but not every LLM backend allows for this. So when you get an error like this, you're gonna have to pick a different model. So let's go for GPD-4.0 instead. And lo and behold, notice that when I run this, the description of Pikachu now actually does come out as a JSON object that is in the schema structure of the Pydantic object that I defined earlier. So I can see that there's a name, there's a long description, and there's a list of types, and Pikachu in this case is just electric. So cool, pretty expressive, quite convenient. This is definitely nice. So this output is great, but there's an extra thing that we can attach on top of this, and that is that we can add a debug flag, because it's great that we have this output, but if I'm debugging later, I would also really like to know what prompt actually got sent to the LM backend. And I would also like to know how long it took. So for that, the one change that we can make is we can go to this backend over here 
and we can say, well, we want this uh, debug flag to be active, actually. When I do that, it's going to rerun. And you can now see that there's this underscore debug key attached to what I get back. I can open it up and I can see the template, the function name, the actual prompt, the schema, the date time, some backend keywords. So this is plenty for me if I'm doing rapid prototyping to debug and to figure out if something might have gone haywire. But yeah, this is just super nice and convenient. Another thing that's cool here is that I have this asynchronous backend available as well. So I can make these calls asynchronously, concurrently if I wanted to. Be mindful though, not every vendor has great allowances when it comes to concurrency, but that is something that's supported here as well. But the next thing that will be good to discuss is maybe a little bit about what I'm building on top of, because I did not build every single integration with all these LM providers out there. No, I'm using a different library that does this for me. All of SmartFunk, all those different backends, I'm borrowing those from the LLM library made by Simon Willison. And it's an interesting library, actually. It's, it's a library that's really meant to make sure that LLMs can run conveniently from the command line, but it also just so happens to be implemented by Python, and it also has a Python API. And here's the quick start for that library. You have to import the LLM library. You then have to get a model, and there's a list of names that point to different vendors, and there's plugins for all of them. You then have a model object. You can then call model.prompt, and you can also pass a API key in here. Although the really cool thing about this library is that it can also automatically pick up environment variables that have the right name. So that was also something I really liked. It's just that for me personally, there's something about having a normal Python function with different inputs that then produce something that I'm interested in that felt a lot more natural in my code base. And there's lots of things that I would like to be able to do from Python, but the whole point of SmartFunk is to just build a little bit of syntactic sugar on top of what you see over here. Now, one of the main reasons that I went for this LLM library isn't so much the Python API. The fact that there is one is great, and the fact that it supports Pydantic objects and that I can integrate, like, all that stuff is good. Uh, but the main reason I really went for this is because it also has a plugin directory with lots and lots and lots of vendor backends to pick from. And I can configure that with just a string. So that means that if I ever make a config file, where I just want to say, oh, try this vendor against that one, it is really just a string I got to import, and I don't have to... I don't know, import some sort of OpenAI object instead of an anthropic object if I want to use an OpenAI model or an anthropic model or a local one or Olama or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At this point, you might look at this and think, gee, that sounds like fun. Let's go ahead and use it. And by all means, you're free to use this if you like to. However, I do think it's fair to maybe also point out a few downsides of this approach and that you don't get too enthusiastic just yet. One big downside of this particular approach is that I'm really assuming a text prompt, and that omits anything that you might want to do with images or audio or video. I'm really assuming that whatever input you have over here, that I can just inject that into some sort of a Jinja template, and that means that if there's an API that allows me to pass Python image objects, yeah, that's just not going to work with this workflow. So there are a couple of use cases where this library is just going to totally flunk. Another downside, and this was pointed out to me on socials, was that this is technically a anti-pattern. I really designed this such that it was short to write, and I basically over-optimized for that. But if we think about the Python typing system, you can imagine that the typing system is just totally going to complain right here. This function, as it's defined right now, doesn't return anything. So this typing over here is plainly false. I'm not returning a Pokemon object. This decorator is going to build a function that wraps around this, and that's going to return a Pokemon class kind of an object. But this function describe over here isn't. So again, my use case is that I use stuff like this inside of Marimo Notebooks and I don't do a whole lot of type checking in there. But if you are in a type check heavy environment, uh, this is just totally going to ruin the entire setup. So in, in a lot of ways, this is a very hacky way of declaring the type that you want to get out. Another reason, and I guess that's really the main reason not to use this, is that this is a hobby project of mine. And the thing with hobby projects is that you can expect someone to maintain it for as long as it's useful to that one person. If you're interested in using something that's just a little bit more serious, then you probably want to have some sort of a project where there's a team behind it. That way you can be sure that it will work for a longer period of time that goes well beyond the interest of a lone developer. I had a bunch of interesting back and forth with different people who also produce LLM tools, one of which was Miroscope, and I gotta say that this is pretty close to what I was actually going for. I just wasn't aware of it when I started building SmartFunk. This is the main example from their Getting Started page, and the way that they go about it is you also have this decorator on top, but instead of having the type that's supposed to go out go onto this function down below, the response is something that you actually put into the decorator. 
This decorator also needs a provider and a model, and they support a whole bunch, so that's also taken care of. This library also doesn't do anything with doc strings. Instead, what they do is they just return a string at the end of the function, and that is going to be sent as a prompt. Honestly, I gotta say, even though I like SmartFunk and I've learned a lot from it, it wouldn't surprise me if in a month from now, I'm just gonna end up using this instead, because it feels like better design. The typing is one thing, but also I can imagine that by returning a string at the end over here, you can write more business logic, and it's gonna just make it way more flexible for you to do prompt engineering as well. So from my perspective, it feels like it's a library that certainly has a lot of good taste going for it. Another library you might wanna look at is Marvin. It is a library that's gone through a couple of major revisions as time has progressed, but it feels pretty stable now. And what makes this library just a little bit different is that they take less of the approach that you wanna have one function that does a whole bunch of stuff and you can really put a lot of behavior in it. They try to be a little bit more specific. So for example, if you wanna take a string and turn it into a Pydanic model, uh, then you can use the cast mechanism for that. But they've also got functions that allow you to deal with images and audio, and they tend to have these different buckets that seem to cover a lot more ground as far as use cases are concerned, but it also means that you have different functionality. You don't have one function that can basically do everything. And finally, there's always Instructor, which is a very likable library. It's just that you gotta be a little bit careful as far as some of the guides are concerned. LLM backends have changed over time, and odds are that you might stumble upon a tutorial that's a little bit outdated. Another somewhat small downside of this library is that if you are interested in trying out all sorts of different backends, the way that you approach a backend is typically programmatic. So not with a string as input, you typically have to do something like, oh, from OpenAI, import the OpenAI client, and then instructor from OpenAI, oh, here's the OpenAI client, and it's, it's a little bit more fiddly to just get this thing started. I hope at this point that I've removed a little bit of mystery on how some of these LLM tools work. A lot of what's happening here when there's a clever decorator being applied is that it just wraps around the function and tries to grab as much useful information, like the type that's going out or maybe like the doc string that's going in, to construct a prompt and that's gonna then return what you're interested in. I'm still very happy that I made SmartFunk. Time will tell how much I'll use it. But if you're keen to learn more, definitely have a look at how this is implemented. There's a couple of extra tricks that I apply just to make sure that default parameters, for example, that they're passed along nicely. And if that sounds interesting, definitely check out the GitHub repository that's in the show notes. Thanks for listening. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please like and subscribe.